On July 2nd, 2011, David Ross was given a rare start over all-star catcher Brian McCann. Ross said his basic plan was, okay, don't mess this up. Well, he hit his second career Grand Slam, which eventually led to a 5-4 Braves win. However, you might have missed something during this at-bat. That's a 25-year-old Jake Arrieta. Not only would these two become teammates just a few years later, in 2016, this happened. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Jason Hayward makes a catch. It's a no-hitter. Jake Arrieta has done it again. On April 21st, 2016, Jake Arrieta threw his second career no-hitter. However, for 39-year-old David Ross, this moment was just as special. Thank you. Thank you. This is what Ross repeatedly told Arietta as he accomplished his dream of catching a no-hitter, which was fulfilled in the beginning of his final Major League season. This was just one aspect of Ross's career that solidified his place in baseball history, even though for the vast majority of his career, he was a backup catcher. However, to understand the full story of his career, we have to go back a few years. And before we do that, if you don't know what this series is, it's about showcasing the players who are loved by one specific fan base or a small group of fan bases. Whether it's due to some clutch performances, a unique aspect to their game, or their personality. And the purpose of this series is to make sure the broader baseball audience learns more about these players. Thank you to Jace for suggesting David Ross, and if you have anyone else in mind, leave it down in the comments below. Ross was drafted on two different occasions, in the 19th round of the 1995 draft and the 7th round of the 1998 draft. Both selections were made by the Dodgers. He eventually made his debut in 2002, an eight-game stint which included two hits, both in the same game. One of these hits was his first big league home run, which was hit off of first baseman Mark Grace. So that's something. Then, in the following season, Ross hit 10 home runs in 40 games. And according to called strikes above average, Ross framed 1.4% more strikes than the average catcher. While this didn't seem like much, it was the fourth highest in the league. However, the player on the top of this list was Dodgers All-Star catcher Paul LaDuca. Even though LaDuca's 2004 midseason departure to the Marlins opened up a full-time starting role for Ross, he wasn't quite ready for the everyday role. The departure of LaDuca wasn't popular amongst Dodgers fans, and with Ross struggling at the plate following the trade, he received quite a few boos from the home fans. Still, the young Ross was respected by his teammates. Veteran hitter Sean Green said that even though Ross was a young player, he had the authority that when he said something, it had weight to it. That's hard to do as a young player. If he was mad, you knew there was a reason he was mad. However, Ross's LA stint didn't last much longer as right before opening day in 2005, he was traded to the Pirates for cash considerations. Then, after 40 games, he was traded to the Padres to fill in for injured catcher Ramon Hernandez. This stint didn't last too long either as he was traded to the Reds ahead of spring training in 2006. While he wasn't immediately given a starting spot, he was often used as Bronson Arroyo's personal catcher. Given they were both new guys to the team, Ross said he and Arroyo hit it off pretty quickly. Eventually, these two could read each other's minds during games. He had his own system for signs. He could tell you what he wanted to with his eyes. With two strikes, he'd make eye contact and look up. You knew he wanted a high heater. You kind of learn when he wants it, so you know when to make eye contact with him. Arroyo himself said that many catchers couldn't understand his patterns, but Ross's intellect allowed them to work together seamlessly. I imagine this connection helped Arroyo turn into an all-star in 2006, but it also helped Ross learn more as a catcher. He's so routine-oriented, he knows what he wants to do out there. I learned a lot about game calling from catching him. As for Ross offensively, he had one of the most interesting offensive seasons ever for a catcher. 21 home runs and an OPS of 130 in just 90 games. That doesn't seem like that many games for that kind of offensive output. Well, Ross became just the second player to accomplish this sort of season, with his former teammate Todd Hudley being the first to do it. However, when he was given more reps in 2007, he traded his plate discipline for home run power, and it didn't go quite as planned. 
As a result, Ross was DFA'd in mid-2008 and was later signed by the Red Sox. However, this stint was short-lived and he became a free agent following the season. Although it didn't take long for him to find a new team, signing a two-year deal with the Braves. Once again, Ross was given a backup role, this time behind all-star Brian McCann. However, Ross took this opportunity and ran with it. That was awesome! The McCann and Ross partnership couldn't have been more successful. Between 2009 and 2012, Ross fulfilled his role perfectly, both on offense and defense. While the Braves made the playoffs two times in these four seasons, Ross only appeared in one game. But man, what a game it was. Ross was given the start over McCann in the 2012 NL wildcard game, and Ross responded by going three for four with a home run and two RBIs. Unfortunately, the Braves lost this game, and this was Ross's final game as a Brave. Despite turning 36 ahead of the 2013 season, Ross was widely considered the best backup catcher in baseball, and he had lots of baseball left in him. So he resigned with the team he once played for, the Boston Red Sox. The 2012 Red Sox finished last in the AL East following the disappointment of the 2011 season. As a result, the preseason predictions didn't feature much confidence in the team, but this team sought to prove everyone wrong. Against all odds, the Red Sox ended the year with the best record in the American League. They went through the Tampa Bay Rays and Detroit Tigers to win the AL pennant and clinch a World Series spot for the third time in 10 years. So how was Ross doing during this time? Well, as the result of a couple concussions, he only played 36 games in the regular season, the least number of games he'd played since 2002. While his defense was still great, even at the age of 36, his offensive output went down quite a bit. However, the postseason is where heroes are made, and oftentimes it's the unlikely players who deliver when it counts. That is ripped into left. Back at the wall, it's over the head of Peralta. One run scores, they hold Bogarts on an RBI double by David Ross. It's 2-0 Red Sox. That's down into the corner. It is a fair ball. It hops out of play, and the Red Sox take the lead. It hasn't happened at Fenway Park for 95 years. The Red Sox are world champions. It took quite a while, but Ross not only won his first ring, he caught the final pitch of the series. Considering Ross spent much of the season on the sideline with concussions, it makes sense why he never thought he'd get to this point. He often questioned whether this was the end of the road, but he persevered and achieved the ultimate goal every player dreams of. At age 36, Ross could have retired with a solid resume, but he had one more year left on his deal with the World Series champs. Why not run it back? Well, the Red Sox finished last in the division and Ross's age was catching up to him, but he did make a new connection. Like with Bronson Arroyo back in Cincinnati, Ross became the personal catcher for John Lester, who had a career year. Although their time together was short-lived as Lester was traded to the Oakland A's at the deadline. After the season, Lester was a very sought after free agent, which led to him signing a six year, $155 million deal with the Cubs. However, the Cubs weren't only after one half of the Lester Ross battery, they wanted both. Yes, Ross was a free agent too, and at one point he was slated to sign with the Padres, who were in the middle of reshaping their entire team with Matt Kemp, Justin Upton, and more. However, he decided to sign with the Cubs as the backup behind trade acquisition Miguel Montero. Unfortunately, in 2015, Ross regressed quite a bit offensively, but his ability behind the plate remained, and his presence in the clubhouse was valuable for a young team like the Cubs. And we got to see Ross pitch a couple times, so that was fun. Still, all good things must come to an end. Ross said he planned to retire after the 2016 season, but some of his teammates decided to have some fun with this news. Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant made an Instagram account to document Ross's final season, at Grandpa Rossi underscore three, a nickname that was given to Ross during his tenure with the Cubs. If there was a singular thing to represent how much Ross's teammates respected him, funny enough, it's the creation of this Instagram account. To receive any sort of a farewell tour proves how much of a 
a significant impact that player had on the people around him. Although, I don't think anyone could have predicted how much Ross actually had left in the tank. You can tell he's trying so hard. Look what he just did. Look what he just did. Ross had his best season since his days in Atlanta. He became just the fourth catcher ever to hit double-digit home runs at the age of 39, and Cubs fans certainly didn't let this go unnoticed, as he was given a standing ovation in his final regular season game at Wrigley Field. What a treat for a backup catcher to get. Although, his season wasn't over yet. The 2016 Cubs won 103 games, their first 100-win season since 1935. For the second straight year, the Cubs had the opportunity to break the curse of the Billy Goat. But the playoffs are a different animal. Everyone on this team needed to contribute to win the World Series. David Ross wasn't an everyday starter, but it didn't take long for him to find a way to make his presence known. In this series, he sends a high fly ball to left. That one well hit. Blanco can't bring it back. David Ross has made it a 1-1 ball game. You have to go. There he goes. There goes Lindor. Thrown by Ross. Got him and what a tag. Thrown by Ross. He is in time and over. Ross flies one into center. Sends Davis back at the wall. It's gone. The 39-year-old in his final game. David Ross has made it 6-3. Here's the 0-1. This is going to be a tough play. Play it. The Cubs win the World Series! Bryan makes the play! It's over! And the Cubs have finally won it all! I'm so proud of these guys. The city of Chicago deserves this. With these guys, with these guys. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. What a way to end a career. Carried on the shoulders of his teammates and beloved by fans, Ross's career ended beautifully. The whole thing was storybook. I feel like I've been in this movie that's been happening since spring training. You can't write what's going on. As the current manager of the Cubs, Ross is writing a new chapter of his baseball story. One day, he could get the chance to add another championship to his resume. Ross spent the vast majority of his career on the bench, but he carved out a legacy that few players are capable of creating. David Ross was more than a backup catcher, and I hope his legacy can be further appreciated by baseball fans everywhere. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, subscribe to Stark Raving Sports, check out my channel Sports Storm, and if you have a fan favorite player you want me to cover, leave it down in the comments. Thanks for watching.